Thank you for tuning in to Session Notes. I'm Ella Sean, a published author, host, and unlicensed therapist on the Black Writer Therapy Podcast. Like any good unlicensed therapist, I record session notes after each session with a writer. This season, you can listen to every session note recorded. But shh, remember, this is proprietary information. Thank you for your discretion. Hey, y'all. It's your girl, Alice Shine, host and a licensed therapist for Black Writer Therapy Podcast. Well, I had the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Michelle Boyd, Ph.D., these are my session notes from that three hour and 30 minute. Yes, I am not making it up. And you heard the numbers correctly. I absolutely adored her from the moment her face popped on the screen and the Zoom call until we signed off with, yes, we need to stay in touch. She is the most genuine, warm, giving, academic I've had the pleasure of meeting. And the fact that she is a Black woman who left academia and decided to create writing retreats for struggling scholars who are having a difficult time writing in the mold of academia is just another reason I kind of hero worship Michelle Boyd. It was interesting how Michelle and I came across each other's radar. I received an email from, from Michelle's assistant asking if we, your Black Writer Therapy podcast, would be interested in having her on the show because she just released her second book entitled Becoming the Writer You Already Are. Thankfully, we were able to get everything scheduled and we had an amazing three hour and 30 minute chat about all things writing, academia, being a Black person in academia, being a Black woman in academia, to the healing process that takes place when we are writing, to her amazing retreats at Equal Academic Writing Retreats, and the gift she gives, how she believes that the people who come to her retreats are actually giving her the gift. She's absolutely humble. And before I get into my session notes, I want to tell you just a little bit about Inkwell Academic Writing Retreats. If you are a scholarly person who is pursuing an academic degree and you have to write your thesis or your dissertation, but you are not feeling very confident or it's causing you anxiety or any of those things, then I am urging you to seek out the opportunity to to attend one of Michelle's retreats. And because I just, I totally believe in what she's doing. And, and I know from vicarious experience that for certain groups of people, specifically women of color and even more specifically black women, there are lots extenuating barriers that are not seen by everyone and not understood by everyone, but that doesn't mean that they aren't there. And with Michelle, she is actually speaking to those barriers and giving techniques and skills on how to overcome them. Think well, academic writing retreat. It is a Black woman-owned company on a mission to help graduate students free themselves from self-doubt and build satisfying, sustainable writing lives. Because academics write because they have to, for the most part. They write 
because that's how you get tenure is by writing and getting published and things of that nature. Our retreats teach scholars to write from the inside out, which I absolutely love that idea to uncover, then trust their own unique writing process. Doing so emboldens them to reclaim their love for their work and do research that makes a difference. Again, if you are a scholar and you feel like, man, I need that. Like I, I need to reclaim my, my love for what I'm doing and, and kind of reconnect with my reason for, for going the distance as, as an academic, then yeah, you will definitely want to check out Inkwell Academic Writing Retreat hosted by Dr. Michelle Boyd. Okay. Now, here I am into my session notes. As you can probably tell, I've waxed poetically about Michelle because she truly is just kind of a kindred spirit. We we are both sans hair. We enjoyed seeing each other's, you know, freshly shaved heads and our we we are both wearing glasses and have potty mouths. And amazingly enough, we did not even foray into potty mouth territory, which I'm a little disappointed about because, you know, it's hard to find folk who are who are comfortable with their own potty mouth. And I, I told her, she says, is that something that would be okay? And I'm like, it's fine. I said, I trust people who have potty mouths because they're not censoring themselves and always thinking about what sounds right for a situation. Those folk I find to be more honest. And it's not just me, because I did read an article on psychology today that that said, yeah, people who curse freely and use, you know, use profanity freely, they tend to be less prone to lying or manipulating people because they're more honest with themselves and others. There we go. But we didn't get into any potty mouth situations. And maybe if I have the opportunity to to ever on the show again, we can just go down potty mouth lane and see just how real we get. I'm going to take a sip of tea. One moment, which reminds me, if you would like to support Black Writer Therapy Podcast and myself as an independent podcaster, please feel free to buy me a cup of tea. Today's tea is chamomile lavender and my tea note says plant kindness and gather love. If you're interested in buying me a cup of tea and supporting this podcast, then I, I will leave a link in the show notes. But let's get to these session notes. I'm going to throw out Three words that stuck out to me when we were going through this three and a half hour conversation. Transformative, overcoming, and magical. I adore those words. Those words mean a lot to me because I I believe if you're doing anything and if you are putting your effort and your time into a thing or a person or an idea or whatever that it is necessary that they meet those three criteria, that they are transformative, that they're not just going to be put out there in the world and then it's all the same once people are exposed to it, nothing changes. Like, What's the point in putting it out there, right? Secondly, overcoming whatever it is that we are putting out there in the world, it needs to be something that helps others and ourselves, obviously, right? Ourselves first and then others to actually jump over that hop and move forward in whatever it is they have been stuck in. Because a life without forward momentum is not a life. It's just kind of a stagnant picture, right? The last magical look, I'm a black woman from South Carolina and I don't care what science says and I don't care what grown folks say. Magic is real. It resides right inside of us. And we have the ability to create magic, to share magic, and to show others the magic inside of themselves. If we are not tapping into that, 
and what the hell are you doing? Why are you here? Why are you pursuing any of what it is you are pursuing? And for me as a writer and for my podcast, Black Writer Therapy, I am talking to those people who set out to write. Why are you writing if you are not tapping into your own magic, if you are not sharing that magic with others and showing them how to connect with their own magic, right? And those were three words that kept popping up in the conversation with with Michelle Boyd. And I was very thankful and I felt I felt very humble actually as a person, right? Human of me. So very humbled that I was speaking with such an amazing woman who understood the importance of being transformative, being an overcomer, and being magical in your own light, right? And she also focuses a lot on natural writing processes. Prior to, you know, my foray out into the world of writing and and connecting with other writers, I was pretty darn confident in sitting down and busting out six to seven hours of writing and then taking a two to three day break and then going back in and giving it another six to eight hours, things like that. Like I had that as a process because it worked for me. It worked for for my my health. Um and it worked for like my mental capacity, right? And so because I have interviewed so many amazing writers and I've had the privilege of befriending so many amazing writers and I belong to two writer support groups. And it's just like, I I have a huge community of writers that I have been gifted with by the universe. And it is not a reflection on any person within this beautiful community. It is a reflection on me, Ella Sean. And that reflection is showing me that perhaps I was not as comfortable in my writing process. Perhaps I didn't trust my writing process as much. Perhaps I was you know, winging it and hoping things would be the way they need it to be. But after interviewing so many, and I don't call what I do on, on Black Writer Therapy Podcast to interview, but after having so many great conversations with writers and and, and just kind of engaging in, in the writer world, I find that I'm, I've been tweaking my writing process and trying to make it look like the process that everyone else keeps telling me is the process that works, right? I listened to and, and read, like Maya Angelou said, she would get up in the morning and do her thing. And then she'd go to a little hotel room where she had a pack of cigarettes and sherry and, you know, all the things that she would need. I think she said like her, her legal, legal pad that she longhand wrote everything on. And she would go there and she would write. And then when she'd come home, she'd have what she did that day and she would go about the day, you know, dinner, blah, 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 all the things. And then in the evening, she would sit and kind of look over what she'd written that day and, and do some some edits. And I was like, damn, that's very efficient, Miss Maya Angelou, Dr. Maya Angelou. And so I said, well, God, I could do that. I think I could get up and, 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 and do my thing and tick, 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 and then go back into my home and, 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 and lead the mom and the wife and the, all the other things. And then in the evening, look at what I wrote. And I was, can't do I have the mental capacity for it. And so from, from just listening to Michelle and then kind of wrapping my own mind around like how I have been putting off my own writing, oof, I haven't written anything substantial since... Probably November 2023. I finished writing a rather long novella as a part of a shared world project that I'd signed up for, you know, a couple of years prior. And my release date was, my release date was on November 
and and on November 28th. And so I, and I struggled y'all. I struggled. It was like, I just need 30,000 words, man. I'm just, I can just try to get 30,000 words. But as things kept going and I kept trying to tweak my writing process, I was just like, Lord God, I just want this to be over. I want to be done with this book. I just want to be done writing for a while. And that was like heartbreaking for me. And after speaking with Dr. Boyd, with, with Michelle Boyd, I realized that I had moved far away from my writing process. And because I was no longer operating in the natural rhythm and uh, ebb and flow of my process, because I was out here dabbling in everybody else's process, I like I couldn't even, you know, and she says this is important. You need to be able to recognize, access, and trust your natural writing process. But then she points out that there are so many external barriers that keep, and she specifically focuses on scholars. I am a fiction writer, right? A creative writer. And so but I don't think it's different. I don't think that there's a huge difference in the barriers that that keep us from accessing and trusting and recognizing what our natural writing processes are. And so just after talking with her at length, I, I told her, I said, oh my gosh, I can't wait to actually like pour through the book, becoming the writer you already are, so that I can reaffirm and reconnect and truly get myself back into a more calm, confident, productive writing practice. And those are the things that she promises, you know, that you will you will walk away from her academic writing retreats with is a more calm, confident, productive writing practice. And so in that regard, I was like, yeah, I, I think that this is going to help me as a writer to reconnect with my my natural rhythms because I cannot get up at five o'clock in the morning and give my writing the first three hours of my day. Why? Because my brain does not come online until about 10 11 a.m. in the morning and then I have like probably until about four five o'clock that I'm like woohoo I'm ready to go I can get 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 but that's what I have like that's what I'm working with as a as a person who is living with cognitive dysfunction disorder as a result of autoimmune uh, disorders and narcolepsy with cataplexy, I have to go with my body's natural rhythms, right? I can't force the process. I can't force somebody else's process to be mine. And that was like just talking with Michelle, it kind of freed me from the need to do that. And it gave me such, I don't know, a sense of, of ease, right? Like that, that sense of sukha that we, we look for in the yoga world of just do what is easy, right? Do what sets your mind and your body and your spirit at ease. Don't, don't try and get a deeper stretch because Patty McRubber over there has thrown her legs behind her head. Like do what allows you to experience ease and just like I don't know why it made sense when Dr. Michelle Boyd said that's that's all you can do but it did and so for that I am eternally grateful she also talked about how academic writers need to feel like what they are writing belongs to them and I was like oh my my gosh like Look, it's not just academic writers. I I felt like this huge disconnect from what I was writing. I was starting to wonder, am I writing to 
appease other people? Am I writing to the white gaze? Am I writing to the gaze of literary agents? Am I writing to the gaze of other writers? Like, what the hell am I writing to and for? Because wherever I was putting out there, it didn't feel like mine. It didn't feel like something that was growing and being nurtured inside of me. And and she talks a lot about writing from the inside out. And that's definitely my philosophy of writing. Like I, it has to come from deep inside of me. I can't just write, you know, fiction about something I see on TV that I know will be like, oh, if I wrote this, it would sell. I could probably get my agent and get a good book deal, like ding, ding, ding. But if it's not something that is already in me, to come out of me, then it's just not going to work out. It's not going to work out. And so I found myself not being true to my own voice as a writer and and seeking all of these other avenues and ways of being a writer. And none of them work because that's just not who I am. I am not a, a plotter. I'm never going to be a plotter. I am never going to be able to sit down and give you you know, the 15 heartbeats of, of, of a piece that I'm working on. I cannot, and I tried to, y'all, oh my God, I tried. Sanithia Williams is a master at that. And she she broke it all down for me and was like, I was like oh my gosh, that's that so cool. It makes it sound very efficient. She was also very, very transparent and said, yeah, but you know, some of those beats don't ever pan out. I what I say is going to happen. Sometimes my characters take over and, and it's a whole different party. So I love that she was so transparent with that. So shout out to Sanithia Williams, who has a new a new novel coming out, I think pretty soon, hopefully in the spring, and her new series and her little little fictitious Georgia Southern Georgia town where we we received, you know, the first book of Surviving the Southern Wedding. So where she was like, Yeah, I just do their stuff to set me third and it's kind of like you know, it's more efficient and it's more effective. I mean, I was just like, yeah, that's what I need. Efficient, effective. And I did. I went in. I'm studying the can. I'm studying all kinds of shit. And I have like big pieces of post-it paper on my wall. I've color coded all my heartbeats, y'all. I'm in it to win it. And I just looked at that thing. Like, I don't know what the hell any of it is. I don't know how I'm supposed to integrate this into my writing. Like, yo, I cannot. I tried, though. It just didn't feel like me. It didn't feel like like what I was writing as a result of doing all that belonged to Ella Sean, writer. And um, I love that Michelle emphasizes that those things have to, that your writing needs to feel like it's yours, right? So... Again, I don't know why it made sense. I told her, I said, I think maybe it's because you're a doctor, Michelle Boyd, and you are doing this great thing for scholarly writers and, and all this, that, and the third. I said, maybe I'm just like, you know, one of those white folk who needs to see the credentials before I can, like, take the advice. I don't know. I don't know. But then I told her, I said, no, that can't be it because I've had two PhDs on my show, one who's a college professor, one who's been damn near sending people into space. And so, so I don't think that's it. I, I don't know, but we just connected. And so, you know, it worked out for me. There are several things that, that goes on at the Inkwell Academic Writing Retreat. And so what I did is just pulled some of the kind of headers that, that stuck out to me. Because again, these session notes, they are about what took place in the in the conversation with the guest, but also they're my session notes and they're they're how I interpret that conversation, how I interpret everything that that happened, right, during that time. And so there are one, two, three, four, five, six. Like this is what you're gonna get when you come to Inkwell Academic Writing tree. Now, number one, we're going to teach you how to bust through barriers. I want to speak to this. Busting through barriers. The first thing 
for me is to recognize that there are barriers out there that I may not be able to see and that those barriers are and can be self-imposed. For, for me, I can say that the barriers to me staying connected to my natural writing process have definitely been all self-imposed because I don't, I don't give enough, you know, care about all the other hoopla with publishing and this, that, and the third for those barriers to matter to me right now. So I, I know that I, I put these barriers up and because I put these external barriers up, I'm the only one who's going to be able to, of course, remove them. But I didn't even know that I had, I had put them up until after speaking with, with, with Michelle. And so I said that to say this to writers, be careful when you are immersing yourself in writing communities and you are building these great writing friendships with other writers that you don't allow what they are doing and how they do what they do to become a barrier to your natural writing process. Because I can assure you, you may not be a person who is, you know, ever like, oh, I'm comparing myself to Tom, Dick, and Harry, and Jane. Because I'm not, I don't, again, I just feel like I'm, I, I know, I know me. But I think it's almost kind of inevitable, right? You're, you're meeting all these new people. They're doing all these things. Some are doing the things you want to do, but you're not there yet. And so that comparison factor does kind of, you know, pop in. So barriers are not always, and as writers, we are definitely more critical. And, and we can be the ones who are placing these barriers around ourselves. Second, focus and motivation. Focus and motivation. That means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Whatever focus looks like for you as a writer, own that shit, right? Because it's not going to look like somebody else's. I know for a fact, I can't get up at 5 a.m. and focus on anything except for I need to go back to bed. I can barely walk right now. I am not even awake. I am the walking dead at 5 a.m., right? So find your own efficient, effective way of putting your story out there, yes? Because what works for one person is not going to work for every person. And that is just the way the cookie crumbles. And if you can't deal with that, then I may mean, kind of like take a step back and say, hey, why am I writing again? What is it that I'm trying to do? Right? Problem and confident. Y'all, those are my favorite two words. Like from everything that I got from Michelle Boyd and and her approach to writing, coaching, and and what she does in her retreats, that is the thing that spoke to my heart and it spoke to my spirit because she focuses on the emotional upheaval that will cut a writer off from their writing, right? And so if you are anxious and and feeling like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't think I can do this. I just need to quit. This is, I don't know what's going on, right? And then you lose your confidence. Like there is no way you're going to produce what it is you want to produce. And I don't care if you're an academic writer, a creative writer, if you're writing narrative nonfiction, or if you're writing erotica. Like if you are not calm and confident in your ability to to tell what needs to be told in a way that is both accessible and informative, right? and entertaining, like for us creative writers, then okay, it's just not going to work out well. And so when we discuss that and how the focus is on creating this sense of stuka, I cannot say it enough, the sense of ease. S-U-K-A is a Sanskrit word, and it means ease, E-A-S-E, not easy, right? It's not easy. But it's ease. You are at 
ease when you're writing, if you can't be in that space, if you cannot hold that space for yourself as a writer, then more than likely you're not calm and you have lost your confidence and you are still struggling with barriers and your focus and motivation are definitely coming from outside of yourself. And so whatever you're doing, it is not effective and obviously not efficient. So calm and confident. I love it. I just want to be calm and confident when I'm writing. Just need to know that I know what I'm writing. It's coming from me. That's where I am with it, right? And then we have a rock solid habits. And this is where I fall short. Right? Like if this was one of the Ten Commandments, I'd be like, hey man, I could I can hit all nine of the other ones, but this whole rock solid habit thing. We gonna have to do some serious, like, you know, coming to everybody, right? Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, uh, Shinto, Vishnu, you name it. We're gonna have to come to some people because look, man habits just don't work out. I want it to work out though, right? I want to be one of those people who can start a habit and 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 like make that habit a ritual and then have that be my thing. I feel just like a space cadet and I know it because when I tell you I am rolling in big Sagittarius energy, it is what it is. I'm not even trying to be like, oh, no. But this is where I want to be. This is where I desire to be is a creator and a steep bullet person, rock solid writing habits. So I am a firm believer that the desires, the true desires of my heart and my soul, the universe will come together and, and make it all work out so that it comes to pass. So this is a desire I'm putting out into the universe. I'm putting out into be the field of pure potentiality and I know right I know that it is my desire it is my desire that thing that is directly connected to the erotic that will go to work and make this a reality for me so I'm not worried about it anymore but and I'm not going to force it like I've been trying to force it but I do need to make sure that I'm keeping my eyes on the prize and not beating myself up every time I fall short of, of, you know, the habit or the ritual. Last but not least, a supportive environment of women. Y'all, when I tell you and I say this with the, the sheer force of everything I hold near and dear to my heart, I say this as a black woman. I say this as a woman. I say this as a writer. I say this as a southerner. I say this as a spiritual being inhabiting a human body so that I am able to fully experience this physical space without a support system of women as a woman. All of the endeavors that we try to bring to fruition will not last, will not stand. There is a reason. There is a reason that what Western civilization calls third world. And yes, I'm giving big shut the hell up Western Civ countries quotes, right? Air quotes. So, what Western civilization calls third world countries, there is a reason women gather every day to do certain things together. There is a reason women are separated from men for certain things because women edify each other. We are the iron, we are the only iron that can sharpen each other. We are not sharpened while we are hanging out there in a man's, you know, masculine energy. Like, what the hell? Only our energy can sharpen 
our energy, right? I need women in my life to sharpen me. I need women in my life to support me that I can reciprocate those actions with. And they don't have to be writers. Just because I am a writer doesn't mean that my group of of women that I call my sisters, that they have to be writers. They don't even have to be creatives, but they just need to be women who get me and whom I get and who we are honest and open and immediate with. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what you're pursuing as a Black woman. Find your group. Find them. Honor them, cherish them, love them, hold on to them. Because that is how you get where it is you want to be. It's by having that support system of women. And notice I didn't say a support system of Black women. Right? Because let us be clear here. As a Black woman writer, yes, of course I want a whole group of Black women write, write, excuse me, Black women writers to be in my support group. But wait, people in hell want ice water. And as my mother has told me my whole life, they're not getting it. They're not getting that ice water. So my point is I have learned that The universe will place people in your life who look absolutely nothing like you thought they would look. And they turn out to be your best friends, your sisters, your ride or dies. Especially as Black women writers, we have to be open to that. We have to be open to accepting and recognizing who the universe places in our lives to be a part of that support system of women, right? So I think that the support situation and the calm confidence, right? The ease with which we go through our writing process and, and, and building that support structure and making sure that what we do is transformative, making sure that what we do is about overcoming, making sure that what we do is about tapping into magic, is about sharing magic, is about showing others how to be magic. To yo, Michelle Boyd, Dr. Michelle Boyd of Inkwell Academic Writing Retreat and Writing Coaching is indeed magic. She is Black Girl Magic personified. And I cannot wait until you guys get to hear this two part recording session with Dr. Michelle Boyd on the Black Writer Therapy Podcast sometime in July of 2024. Right now, I am getting ready to go and enjoy the rest of my cup of tea. And I want to remind you, if you have not already followed, subscribe, hit auto-download for the Black Writer Therapy Podcast, do so. And if you are more into going to YouTube and pressing play, I am on YouTube, Black Writer Therapy Podcast. You don't get to see my gorgeous face or the gorgeous faces of my 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 guest just yet, but you can tune in and listen to my podcast. Also, I have a newsletter on Substack just for Black Writer Therapy. And there are going to be a lot of perks coming up where you can see my gorgeous face and the gorgeous faces of these beautiful Black women writers who share themselves and their talents with me in all of these sessions. If you want to support Black Writer Therapy Podcast, do so by buying me a cup of tea or becoming a paid subscriber to my Black Writer Therapy newsletter on Substack where you get access to video feeds and little like, hey, what's up? I got merch. You can get a discount or whatever else comes up, right? These have been my session notes. After a three and a half hour session with Dr. Michelle Boyd and I've learned an amazing amount of 
information, and I am so excited to share that with you. I am Alice Sean, author, host, and unlicensed therapist of Black Writer Therapy Podcast. And I want to remind you, be kindest to yourself first, always, and in all ways. Bye. This is Ella Sean. Thank you for tuning into Session Notes, presented by the Black Writer Therapy Podcast. If you like what you heard, please remember to like, follow, share, download, and leave a review or rating. As always, remember to give yourself a little bit of grace. In a world where shadows dance and secrets lurk, comes an unforgettable saga of broken souls, written by Alishan. Get ready to embark on a gripping journey through time, a dark southern coming-of-age saga that spans over 30 years. Nothing is as it seems. With every turn of the page, secrets unravel, revealing a web of intrigue that will leave you breathless. Breaking is the easy part. Having the courage to look into the mirror of your souls, allowing yourself to be consecrated, to rise harmoniously in alignment with self and the universe, that's the hard part. Join John and Vivian on this unforgettable journey where shattered souls rise, courage is tested, and destinies are forged. The Broken Souls series by Ella Sean, a gripping four-book masterpiece that will keep you captivated till the very end. Don't miss your chance to experience this compelling tale of love, loss, and redemption. Purchase your copy now and be prepared to have your soul shattered. Because sometimes... The darkest paths lead to the brightest light.